Hang on a minute, I'm going to put the mic on. Welcome to a, a, a short film. Maybe. I mean, Chris is going to have a fucking rant. <laughs> Just talking about tattoo conventions and how people judge tattoos and what would be classed as a good tattoo and a bad tattoo. For me, I think if somebody judges something, it should be done from a technical aspect, but then also Paul argues of the artistic aspect. And I don't think a lot of people take that into consideration. What I've noticed in certain shows, somebody might win a, sh win, win, uh, a category because artistically their tattoo is really good, but technically, their tattoo is really fucking badly yeah. done. And you know it's not going to hear well. You know it's not going to fucking look good in a couple of months' time. And there are a lot of big name artists that's happened with. You know, where they've done these fucking tattoos that just don't heal well at all. But I, I think ultimately, where, where we uh, maybe differ on this is that I pref would prefer to see a tattoo that was artistically really interesting. And I will forego... Yeah. I mean, you know, we were saying just a minute ago, like, the, the ultimate apex is to have great artistry and great technical ability. But if, you had, to, if mm -hmm. you had to have a scale like that, a balance between the two, I think where Chris comes down is he, he's more like it's got to be technically good and, you know... Well, no, not necessarily that. What, what, what I think is, basically, Paul has judged a lot of shows and he was explaining that there are certain criteria that you've got to take, you know, if it's the line work, shading, and all things like that. Um, but you're all very technical things. And what I think is the artistic side of it should be included yep. in the overall, like, yep. what is the design? Is it meant to have fucking, like what we just said now, is yep. it meant to have, like, you know, tapered lines and is the lines meant to look that way? You know, like Paul said, what is the context of that? and Of the tattoo. So it makes me think, right, does the entire fucking tattoo judging system, seems that we're on a massive lockdown, it's a massive reset for tattooing, you know, should they readjust and reassess how they judge tattoos? Just before we were recording this, the one thing and the point I was going to make to Paul, right, is tattooing these days is so oversaturated, there are lots of conventions on and... Paul said, and I completely believe this, not all awards carry the weight that they used to carry. I think there's very few conventions where I would genuinely be like, honored to win an award. Other ones, it's literally a case of you are the best of a bad bunch. Yep. And I, I've seen that in many shows. To my idea, and what I was about to say was, if I put on a convention, and let's just say I have a certain criteria for you to win an award, you have a black and gray category. Now, in a convention was in, in Cardiff or something like that, or Newport, I think you might have judged it. Uh, say like Newport Tattoo Convention that Paul judged. If every single tattoo that entered into that category was not good, yeah. you're still going to have to pick one because one is the best of a bad bunch. Yeah. On all accounts, there were some really good tattoos coming out of Newport. I'm just using that as an example because Paul judged it. I think I judged that one. I judged Cardiff or Newport. Dang, I don't know. I don't know. Mate, I, I might have. Allegedly, I might have. I was probably drunk. He done Newport. See, I got a fucking good memory. <laughs> What well, my idea, and I think this would bring a lot of credibility to tattooing, is if you have a tattoo convention and everybody enters in, you go through all the judging, you look at it and go, do you know what? I, I genuinely don't think anybody was good enough today. You don't give a fucking award. You just go, really sorry, guys. Nobody was good enough to win an award in this category, so we're not giving one out. Not giving one out. They, or, yeah, maybe have like a minimum standard. Now, see, uh, I don't know if they still do it, but uh, at the London Tattoo Convention, when you sign up... Oh, have you heard that's brutal as fuck? Well, they have a, they have a pre-judging, so they actually... <laughs> when you go to sign up to enter your tattoo, if they don't feel it meets the level, the, the basic level of that tattoo... And in London, it's a big show and it's got a big reputation and I think that's why they do it they go look I'm sorry it, it doesn't and it doesn't fit the category or you can't do this and I, yeah, yeah. I think that's the right way of doing it it keeps the quality up but one of Nipples clients uh, you know Jay he's done the full black and grey bodysuit on yep. he went up there and he was like I was in the queue I was waiting and there's just people walking up and down and going you your tattoos are shit get the fuck out <laughs> 
Fucking hell, it's a bit harsh. And this guy is here with his full... <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were like, sort, no, you're not even going up on stage. No, not good no. enough. You're not good enough. And they're just walking up and down, just pulling them out. And I'm like, that, maybe you could be a bit more tactful and saying, really sorry, sir, but that tattoo is not at a standard that we feel is good enough to be entered into the London Tattoo Convention because it's such a prestigious fucking thing. I also know why they do that stuff, mate. It's because I've been at conventions judging where, like, colour realism has come up. And there's 400 entrants, and it's took us three hours to just see everything. Uh, me and a mate of mine actually drank an entire bottle of Zambuca while we were judging one category. It went on for that long. So you can imagine what state I was in by the end of the fucking that category. Yeah, I can imagine. I wonder if that's the reason why some fucking shit tattoos win, because uh, judges are fucking steaming going, I'm like, yeah, that looks, yeah, that, that looks okay. I mean, by, by the end of it, I could see three tattoos, so I just judged the one in the middle. <laughs> And the, <laughs> the other thing that we were bringing up, right, is judging awards, right? One thing I was always done my head in is when you go to a tattoo convention and somebody is there and they're not a tattooist and they're judging people's tattoos. And I'm thinking, how the fuck can somebody judge your tattoo when they don't have an understanding yep. of the way it's done at all. They have no understanding of tattooing. They just, oh yeah, that's a pretty picture like this. Yeah, it looks tiny. But reality is, you don't understand the technical aspect of it in any way. You're just going, oh yeah, that looks nice. Tick. One way you could do that that would be really interesting. Say you had a panel that was made up of one tattooist, one artist from another genre, so a painter or an illustrator or something, and one client, you know, person from the street who likes tattoos and they were all allowed to give own, not mark the categories so the tattooist could mark the, the, the technical the technical application of the tattoo the artist could mark it on, te on artistic merit oh and then the other person yeah yeah is that a cool tattoo or not and it's worth like say five points each you know what I mean and then you could b bring them together yeah yeah that's really good actually that's a good idea now speaking of ideas right I had this concept a long time ago right and I'm not sure if I pitched it to anybody but I thought this would be fucking cool because you have like at one point right you had different companies doing different industry awards you had an industry award ceremony with one company industry award ceremony with another company and it was like this like one convention is going UK's best tattooist another person is going UK's best tattooist and it's like well you can't have two of the UK's best tattooists because there's no consensus there no so I had an idea Right, and my idea was it would involve all the conventions, all the major conventions working together. Yeah. And it would be each convention, it would essentially be like a championship of tattooing. Yeah, so Champions League. Yeah. So you'd have like say Liverpool, London would be like the main stage, or the main stage was would would differ each year, but you'd have all these conventions and whoever wins best of show yeah. moves up. Do you know what would be brilliant with that? Ten hang on. Go on. You could tell me after I fucking finish talking. <laughs> You have 10 conventions. The winners of like best of show in each of those conventions, they move up into the league. You split that down then, it's five versus five. Yeah. It narrows down and narrows down and narrows yeah. down. And the last person left, they are the UK's best tattooist. Yeah. And then the following year, they have to defend their title. And you get a fucking wrestling belt or like a fucking, you know, like the big belt. <laughs> That'd be cool. Be fucking awesome. It's, it's not like, oh, you get this award. It's a legit, like you have that belt, right? And yeah. when you lose that belt, or if you forfeit your belt, that belt gets passed on. Do you know what I think they could do? Imagine if you did it around, imagine if you did it around the world. So you got like, say you get the UK winner, right? So the UK winner, you, you win a show anywhere in the UK and part of the prize with the shows that have signed up, imagine you won as part of your prize, you won a booth in London. And then, yeah. and then you, you went to the London convention and if you won there, like, so you, like if, you know, the London heat, then you win a booth wherever the, it's being held the following year so it'd be like the strongman competition so like imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. you get an American artist wins at a show in America so you've won at Hell City or something so this year we're having the show I don't know is being hosted in the, the, the ultimate show is being hosted at say Paris so it, it rotates each year so you have the best tattooist in the world final one year it's in London one year it's in Hell City yeah 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 no, that, that's and it just moves around it'd be brilliant it'd be, like, be well worth like fucking getting Involved in that, I mean, right? Good fun. 
We created it. Trademark, patent pending. T TM, TM, TM. You know? <laughs> I tell you, one person I thought had a really good idea was when Mark Bester had his convention. Um, and he had that Master of Styles fucking competition. And I thought that was wicked because it really showed people's weaknesses. You know, certain artists within the industry that are like fucking amazing. It actually showed all of their weaknesses yeah. and the people that you would have expected to do well didn't do fucking well at all yeah. it showed how certain artists lacked creativity and lacked the ability to fucking put in a solid line yeah, yeah I, th I thought that was fucking genius as well ultimately that became Ink Master wasn't it because that's kind of what that the whole point of that yeah. show is, is, is they went to fucking uh, they went there and, and, that, and done that so yeah that's they got the, maybe they got the idea from there <laughs> Ta tattoo conventions, they're a weird one. Winning awards, judging them, how those they're done. I think they, they, it's always going to be controversial, isn't it? So, oh, yeah. Um, if, if you've got any ideas for how, you know, conventions could be judged or how the awards could be configured or whether you think any of our ideas have got any legs, do they make any sense? Would you like to see it done like that? Drop them in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit, press that one, uh, press that one, press that one. This has been um, a tattoo short film. We'll see you next time, guys. Live long and prosper, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs>